Myo means muscles and fascia is the gluey web of connective tissue that binds and holds it all together. Essentially, the fascia gives the muscles its structure and support. Uh, when you combine these two words together, myofascial, it essentially is discussing or talking about the unity and the interconnectedness of these two systems. So what I want to do in this video is talk about what myofascial release is, who performs it, who needs it, uh, and then the difference between myofascial release and getting a massage. So first off, what is myofascial release? Well, it is when a therapist, and usually it's going to be a massage therapist, a chiropractor, or a physical therapist, those are probably the three professions that do it the most, but it's when they put manual pressures in. Usually they're gonna use their hands, some use an instrument, but it's when they are putting these manual pressures in with the attempt the goal is to manipulate the muscles, but especially the fascia. Uh, and what they're trying to do is improve the form or the function, um, improve the posture or the biomechanics of the person they're doing it on, or they're trying to decrease pain. Uh, let's say they have myofascial pain syndrome, or arthritis, or something that's, you know, some kind of a musculoskeletal pain, and they're trying to reduce that pain. So I wanna give you two examples of improving the form or the function, and then two examples of how it reduces pain, uh, and then we'll talk about the, different, the difference between this and a massage. So the form and the function, the biomechanics, these kinds of things. Well, let's use an example that somebody is hung up, you know, their, their fascia is tight in the front of their shoulder, and this can happen anywhere in the body, but I'm just using this one example. Well, when they're tight and pulled forward like this, well, they might have neck pain. They might have pain in between their shoulder blade, that scapular region, because that, that area is always under this chronic tension and stress because everything's pulled forward here. So in this particular example, there might be less work done there. They could still do work there to decrease pain, but they might be stretching, massaging, manipulating the front part, the pectoralis muscles, in through here in an attempt to improve either the posture or just the biomechanics, allow somebody to move better through their shoulder, and they're doing that in an attempt to reduce neck or shoulder pain. Um, and, and that pain would be on the opposite side in this case. So another example of myofascial release to improve the function, um, think about a lot of the tendon issues that people have, rotator cuff injuries, um, you know, the tendinosis, they call them golfer's elbow, tennis elbow. All of these things respond really well. Now, these don't feel good in the moment. But when you do something like a transverse friction massage, so you find those tendons and you kind of go across the muscle grain like this um, really hard, what you're doing is stimulating new collagen growth on those tendons. Because a lot of times those tendinosis, you know, these tendon issues that have the tendons are weak, the collagen fibers are uh, a little bit displaced, they're not organized, they're not strong. And so when you do something like that, you're essentially rejuvenating uh, this repair process of the collagen fibers. Um, so that is not for pain relief because it doesn't feel good. Now the good news is you don't have to do it very long, you only need to do it for about a minute. Um, so it doesn't feel good in the moment, so it's not pain relief. But over the course of four to six weeks of doing this a couple times per week, you're helping to stimulate new collagen, new growth, um, and then repairing the uh, tendon while you do that. Now, some examples of pain relief. So let's go back to an example here, but it could be in the back of the hip. And you're, you actually have pain in that area. Well, you could do myofascial release, deep tissue work on those areas to improve the circulation of that area because a lot of times muscles that are painful, like let's say myofascial pain syndrome, trigger points are a common example. What, that, what is happening with those a lot of times is it's congested in there. They don't have that good circulation. With that congestion of fluids, um, become, it becomes more inflamed. And with that inflammation, it becomes tender, overly sensitive and painful. So now you're doing these deep tissue works in an attempt to create more of a fluid dynamic in through there get that congestion out of there, and then people can, they can usually move better. They have less pain. Uh, and then the other thing is we're stimulating um, what are called these, these, I call them the position sensors of the body. We have these tiny little nerve fibers and they are especially in the fascia. So these little nerve fibers let us know where we are in space. So I, I give the example a lot. If I close my eyes, I know where I'm, where I am in space. So I could give you the peace sign, a thumbs up, a hang loose, 
And I can do that with my eyes closed because I know where I am in space because of these little tiny nerve position sensors, these little receptors. When you stimulate those receptors, let's say with these manual therapies, myofascial release, when you stimulate those receptors, you're in a way kind of resetting those receptors, you're waking them up. And a lot of times when that happens, people will say, I feel like I can move better and I feel like I have less pain. So you're overriding the pain response by the stimulation of those receptors. So there are a few examples. Now what a lot of people want to know is what's the difference between myofascial release and a massage, which would be better for me? Um, and really it's pretty easy. Myofascial release is simply just a type of a massage. So massage is a more general term and myofascial release is a more specific term. So let me give you an example. Within massage, you could get something like a lymphatic massage. These are gentle sweeping motions that uh, bring lymph and improve lymph circulation to the heart. But it's not, the intent isn't to manipulate or change the muscles or the fascia. Um, other examples, a lot of people go to a massage therapist for more calming, relaxation. Let's put that nice music on and let's relax. And, and I want you to work head to toe. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's value and benefit to that for relaxation purposes. Um, but it wouldn't necessarily be myofascial release unless their intention is to specifically manipulate the muscles and the fascia. So those are a couple, you know, just some nuances of that. So keep in mind, myofascial release is a type of massage. Massage is a more general term and could mean more things. Which is right for you? Is myofascial release right for you? Usually people that do myofascial release are therapists that do it. They're doing it with that intention and they're doing it for a specific condition. So for somebody who has, let's say that tendinitis, tendinosis, myofascial pain syndrome, but they're in pain and they're looking for relief from pain or they're looking for more, uh, better movement, better posture. For those people, myofascial release is better. Um, and then a lot of times people want to know, well, how long should a session last for myofascial release? So here's the thing, those relaxation massages might be upwards of 60 or 90 minutes. A session of myofascial release, if you're being pinpoint and specific with where you need it, it doesn't need to take that long. Honestly, when you work a specific area, let's go back to this example where I'm trying to manipulate uh, the fascia in here, you can do that within five, 10, 15 minutes. Um, so myofascial release, typically if you're doing it for therapy and you're being very specific, you just don't need to do it quite as long. Um, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight with myofascial release, massage, what it is, who needs it. Um, as always, if you got something out of this video, if you learned something, please give us the thumbs up, uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, that helps out a lot and it, it encourages me to make more videos like this for you.